So with the US Open done and dusted, we have some predictions to go through, and I'm actually kind of surprised that I didn't do as bad as I thought I did. First half of the week was terrible, but seemed to come through in the end, but let's go have a look at what I got wrong and what I got right this time around at the US Open. So an interesting one to start with, Medvedev Sinner, a little bit of an interesting clash as well. They're both in the same half of the draw, top half, and Elkris is in their way. I'm gonna go with Medvedev to have a better run. So pretty happy with this one because Medvedev, of course, had Alcaraz. You know, there was Zverev, there was Sinner in his section. But Sinner went down to Zverev, and of course, Medvedev made the final, beating Alcaraz along the way. So really happy that I got this one to start. The best of the qualities, I'm gonna go with Taro Daniel. He's been really good this year on the hard courts. And on the women's side, I'm gonna go with Zvonareva. All right, so now things are gonna get kind of bad. So both of these players lost in the first round. Uh, Daniel lost to Monfils. Zvonareva actually lost to a lucky loser, Vikmeyer, in the first round. There weren't actually too many players on the WTA that did well from the qualies, but on the men's side, I should've gone with a Stricker or even a Goyo who made it to the fourth round. So the country that I think's gonna do the best at the US Open is USA. I'm just gonna go with USA. So this was a no-brainer. They had so many players playing at the US Open and of course, Goff winning the whole thing. Keys did well. The American men did well as well. You know, Tiafo, Fritz, Shelton making the semis, of course. So this was a no-brainer. So many Americans playing at home and they always do well. The most aces, I'm gonna go with Hercatch again. He's hit more aces than anybody this season. On the women's side, I'm gonna go with Sabalenka. So I wasn't far off. Uh, unfortunately, Hercash just didn't get through enough rounds to get to the top of the ace count, but Sabalenka made the final, and she took out the ace count as number one. So I'm happy that I got at least half the players. I know that this one kind of depends on how well they do at the tournament. If you're losing the first round, you're probably not going to hit 100 aces. So the one and two in the world, who's going to go further? I reckon Sabalenka might go a little further. Again, now I'm starting to get into it. This is good. Sviantek, of course, losing to Ostapenko early in the tournament, or early-ish. And Sabalenka made the final. Probably should have won the final, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So the players that I think will have an unseated run, I'm going to go with Lehechka, who actually made a final last week in Winston-Salem. And I'm going to go with Sophia Kennan. She actually beat Coco Goff at Wimbledon. And that was short-lived. We are back to terrible predictions. Uh, Lehechka lost in the first round of Karatsev. Straight sets. Winston-Salem meant nothing. And Sevilla Cannon unfortunately lost to Kazakina in the tournament early as well. So it's a tough draw for Cannon. Maybe I should have gone with someone else. Probably should have picked Shelton. <laughs> Obviously, right? He made the semis. All right, top 10 upsets in the first week. I'm going to go with Garcia. She has had some really strange losses this year. On the men's side, I'm gonna go with Rublev. He has such a tough draw. So this one was kind of a no-brainer with Garcia, who hasn't been playing well for the entire season. Could have gone with Zachary as well, who lost pretty early. On the men's side, Rublev, he had a tough draw, but it just didn't fall that way, and he got away with missing a lot of players. Uh, the only real tough player in the first couple of days was Monfils, and he got through him. But uh, made the quarterfinals play. Medvedev should have picked someone like a Runa or a Sidzi Pass or even a Rude, who didn't do too well. So for the dark horses for this event, I've got to go with her catch on the men's side. And I'm going to go with Samson over. She's played really well lately. So we're back to me predicting all the players that lost. Uh, there's no such thing as a camp curse. Uh, Draper actually beat her catch in the second round. Pretty unexpected. Draper has been injured for the most part. He actually made it into the fourth round and lost to Rublev. So he actually continued that run after beating her catch. And Samson over ended up losing in the third round of Keys, which is not a bad loss. Keys made the semis, or probably could have made the final had she beaten Sabalenka. So Samson over didn't do great, but man, her catch, he just let me down. So the big one, Djokovic, Alcaraz, who's gonna have a bigger run? I think I picked Djokovic the last two times. We're gonna make it three in a row. I think Djokovic is gonna have a better run than Alcaraz. This one was going to be a tough one. I got this one wrong at Wimbledon. I got it right at the French Open. And this time around, I got it right. Thanks to Medvedev, he beat Alcaraz, where Djokovic didn't have to play Alcaraz. So, made the, uh, made the easy choice. Picked the guy who had the better draw. So, my hot take for the US Open, usually it's who's going to lose or what crazy thing's going to happen. It's going to be a little bit more positive this summer. I reckon Casper Ruud's going to surprise a lot of people and do well. Yeah. This is... Uh, 
this is bad. Uh, <laughs> I try to be positive with this one. Usually I'm pretty negative and go, oh, you know, I'm gonna pick someone to be terrible. I try to be positive and he backfires. Uh, he lost in the second round route to, uh, to Song and really just couldn't replicate what he did 12 months ago. All right, so my semi-final lineups. This is the hardest thing to do, I think, for me anyway. I seem to never get this right. I'm gonna go with Fiontech taking on Mukova in the first semi-final and Sabalenka Bagula in the next one. <laughs> on the men's side, I'm gonna go with Djokovic taking on Kasper Ruud in one of the semis and then Elkares taking on Medvedev. And again, I'm picking three of the top four favorites. Pretty happy with these ones. You know, usually I suck at these ones. I uh, got two out of four for the lady. Of course, Goff made it into uh, the semis instead of Sviantec. Pagula didn't make it that far. Uh, Keys obviously took her spot there. But on the men's side, I mean, I picked three out of the top three players in the world and they all made the semis, which is really good. Root, of course, being the exception. And Shelton, I mean, not many people would have picked him. So uh, I'm not too mad at these results. And the big one, who is gonna win the US Open this year? I gotta go with Djokovic on the men's side. It's so hard not to pick him. And I'm gonna go with Sabalenka on the women's side. And again, pretty happy with these ones. Djokovic won the whole thing. I mean, you could have picked Djokovic four times this year and you would have got it right three times. Sabalenka also, I mean, she's been the most consistent Grand Slam player of the season. Of course, making to the semifinals or better at every slam this year. So again, just picking the obvious picks, but sometimes you just gotta pick the obvious picks if you want a point. But there are my predictions for this time around uh, at the US Open. Let me know down in the comments below, how did you go with your predictions? And don't lie, because I do read everything. But uh, next year, we'll do the Australian Open. We didn't get to do that this year because this idea kind of came around at the French Open. I don't know, let me know down in the comments below. Do you think we should do them for other tournaments? Do you think we should do a predictions kind of like this for Shanghai that's coming up? Or maybe, uh, you know, the ATP WTA Finals? I mean, we can muck around with it there. It goes more often on the channel for other events as well. The US Open didn't do that badly.